So um, we want to talk a little bit about recursion. And recursion, so far, all the methods that we've created, the methods call each other, but they never call themselves. And so that's the barrier that we're going to remove today. And we're going to have a situation now where the methods can call themselves. And you might start to think to yourself, well, how would that work exactly? And as we get through the material over the next couple of weeks, you'll get a better and better understanding of how that works inside the machine. But right now, I just want to give you sort of the outline of it. And um, in order to do that, we're going to just go through one example. I'm going to ask you to get together with your partner and also take out your computers and move on to coding bat. And we'll start with one simple example uh, before lunch. And then when we come back, we'll do a partnership exercise that will kill the entire rest of the period. Yes, sir. All right, so uh, let's see, where are we? Okay, let's go over to, uh, <clears throat> let's go over to uh, coding bat. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so now if we look over here, you can see there's two recursion sets here. Uh, these are more of what you're just going to see on your uh, AP exam. These are a lot harder, and there used to be a recursion three on here, which they removed for some reason, which were so hard that I, I couldn't do them. Most kids couldn't do them, but a few kids could. I had students that could do them, uh, but they got rid of those. I really enjoyed working on those, but they got rid of them. Uh, so let's look over here at recursion one. And uh, we're going to skip this factorial one, because we're going to tackle that one after lunch on paper. I'm going to ask you to go over to this bunny ears problem right now. And of course, uh, the bunny ears problem is a nice simple problem to start with. They, they give you so many bunnies, and uh, that's the number of bunnies right there, and they want to know how many ears in total have they ha do they have. Now, obviously, we could do this very simply. If we have four bunnies, we just multiply by two, we get eight ears. If we have ten bunnies, multiply by two, we get twenty ears. That would be a simple way to do it without recursion. But we're going to show you how this problem can be solved recursively. So what we're going to do is we're going to... <clears throat> we're going to say that, um, let's say we have four bunnies, right? So we have four bunnies. So we'll say that the first bunny has two ears, right? The first bunny has two ears. And then we still have to do the processing for three more bunnies. Okay, so if we have four bunnies, the first one has two ears, and then we'll repeat the process for the remaining bunnies. So here, what we'll say is, let me see if I can blow this up for you a little bit. So the first bunny, the current bunny, has two ears. And then we're going to say something. And then we're going to call this method with some other number like that. And then we're going to put a return over here to indicate that that's going to be the final answer. So these, these two ears belong to the current bunny. And my, over here, what I want to know is how many bunnies are left after I've accounted for the current bunny. So the total number of bunnies that came in was bunnies. So uh, let me just make this clear. This is just going to be bunny ears here. We're going to call the same method. My question is, what should be the expression in here? Mr. Sawyer, sir, what do you think? Look over here. So I got two for the current bunny, and then I want to call this method again and, and have it process the remaining bunnies. So what should I put over here? Should I put bunnies in here again? So you can see that this needs to be bunnies minus one because we've already accounted for one of the bunnies. You see that, right? Now, Go ahead and run this and you'll see, go ahead and run this, you'll see this won't work right now. So if we run this, you can see that we're going to get this error called stack overflow. And when you're first learning a recursion, you're going to get this error a lot. And basically what this means is that you have infinite recursion. And the reason you have infinite recursion is that you have not followed one of the important principles of recursion. And that is that every recursive algorithm, every recursive algorithm has to have at least one thing called a base case. A base case is a case where you have to stop the recursion from continuing forever. And my question to you is, what do you think would be a good base case for this situation where you say, okay, you know what? I don't need to recurse anymore. How, how would we know when to stop recursing? Like, okay, you know what? We don't, we don't need to do the recursion thing anymore. What would be a good base case Yes, sir, Mr. Pandali? Okay, so how would we say that in uh, computing code? So we would say if, if bunnies equals zero, uh, sir, what should I do if the bunnies equals zero? I, I need to return a value. What value should I return if there are no bunnies? 
Okay, so I just return zero here. And then here, I'm going to put an else. You probably don't even need an else, but I'll put an else like that. And you can see here, now this is my base case. And this is considered my recursive case. You can see that I get the right answer. Now you might be saying this is an awfully complicated way to avoid multiplying by two. And it is, but this is just to introduce you to the concept. So there were several people that were involved with the development of recursion. Let me talk a little bit about history. Uh, some of you might have the mistaken notion that recursion is something that got invented after computers were around. But this is an ancient, I mean thousands of years old algorithm developed originally by Euclid to find the greatest common uh, divisor of two numbers. And you can see that it uses recursion. So recursion has been around uh, for thousands of years. It's just that it's become more useful now with modern computers because we can use it to do some additional calculations. But I just want to show you the power of this. Uh, it's been around for a very long time. That says that every recursive algorithm, including this one, can also be solved using a loop. That's called the Church-Turing theory. Church-Turing theory. And so I'll say that again. It says every recursive algorithm always has a counterpart solution where you can get rid of the recursion and just use a loop. Now you might be thinking, well, if that's the case, if you can always solve it with a loop, why do we need to bother with the recursion? And the answer is that there are a lot of algorithms where it is just naturally recursive. It's just easier to think of it as a recursive situation. <coughs> the other advantage of the recursion is a lot of times you can take this much code and turn it into this much code. And so there are some advantages of ha having terse code. And so those are the reasons why recursion is still very much around. Yes, sir. So let me tell you what we're going to do after lunch, and it'll help explain what's going on here. I realize this is blowing your mind here. Uh, you didn't come in thinking that this was going to happen today. So it'll be much easier when we take pieces of paper and we have the bunny ears calls and we put them on top of each other when we keep calling bunny ears more and more. And then as, uh, when we hit the base case, we start taking the pieces of paper off. And you'll see mechanically what's going on. Right now, some of you can picture it in your mind. But when you come back after lunch, we're going to go through an exercise where you don't have to picture it in your mind. You'll be able to visualize it on using pencil and paper. And that's, that's my goal. So I'm going to just ask you to hold off for just uh, a little while until after lunch. And then we're going to discuss this. So. Here's what we learned so far. Every recursive solution has a, another a solution that can be done without recursion using a loop. Every recursive solution has to have at least one base case. You're allowed to have more than one, but you've got to have one to stop the recursion. Okay? And um, that, that's basically it. Now, generally speaking, there is one individual who is considered to be like the father of recursive theory. Does anybody know who that is? You've seen a movie about him. Yes, Alan Turing. So yeah, it's a Church-Turing theorem. Like that, that's that guy, Turing. So he was pretty instrumental in developing uh, recursive theory.